Hey guys, Steve Ballasone with Ballasone Builders, coming to you from our custom home build here in Warren, New Jersey. A lot has happened over the last couple of months. Come check it out. So as you can see behind me, the house is starting to take shape. The last time we left off, we were just starting our excavation work. Now on this lot, because it is a walkout basement, the excavation portion went fairly quick. Once that was done, we prepped for our superior precast foundation walls. Let's go take a look at them. Okay, so we're down here in the basement and I wanted to show you our foundation. It's not your typical pour in place concrete foundation, but instead these are superior precast foundation walls. You send your plants to this company, they'll design them, they'll pour them off site in a controlled environment, then they'll show up here on a truck and they'll get set in place with a crane. It's pretty neat to watch. As the panels get set together, they'll put a bead of sealant in between it, sandwich it together, and give you a nice watertight seal. Now underneath our slab here, we've got our crushed stone. On top of our crushed stone, we have two inches of closed cell spray foam. That's gonna give us an R value of roughly 14. But because we're using closed cell spray foam, that's also acting as a vapor barrier, and it's also gonna help stop any radon gases from coming through. On top of that, we installed a 10 mil vapor barrier again over everything, and then poured our concrete on top of our wire mesh and our heating tubes. So our basement is radiant heat, and let me show you a couple of the manifolds that we have down here. So over here, you'll notice our manifold setup. We have three locations down here in the basement. Each of these are designated to a zone. Later on, we'll control zone valves on these. Each has a supply and a return that goes back to the boiler. We'll go more into that in detail in our next episode. All right, if you look above us, these aren't your typical I-Joyce framing. This is all open web floor trusses. Now the client wanted to keep as much as the head height as possible down here, so they didn't want soffits built around that. So because of that, we designed in a duck chase right down the middle of these trusses. And it might sound like an easy solution. The challenge to that is the ductwork size. So we had to leave out a few trusses bring in our HVAC contractor, had them install their ductwork, and then we were able to install the last few trusses and finish the subfloor decking up above. That allowed us to keep everything up in the ceiling and eliminate any needs for soffits. So having the insulation on the inside of our superior precast foundation is nice, but let me show you what we're doing outside on our sheathing. All right, so the new energy codes require continuous insulation on the exterior of the building. And one of the ways that we can achieve that is by using a product called zip sheathing. So zip sheathing comes to you already with insulation on the back side and your sheathing surface on the front. A couple challenges with that. What we decided to do here on this project was typically your sill plate is flush with the foundation. Here we brought it out inch and a half because that's the thickness of our insulation. Secondly, on the corners, instead of meeting the corners up like this and not having a nailing surface there, what we did was we created a channel on the back side. What that allows us to do is drop our sheathing down over our sill plate. We could fasten it right into the sill plate, but we could also slide it over now and we have a continuous nailing surface on the corner. Later on, we'll take our zip tape flash tape straight down, flash tape along the bottom, and we'll be nice and sealed. Now you'll notice if you look at the foundation, it's a little different. We don't have a rim joist here. The reason behind that is that we actually sank our floor joist 
into the foundation. And the reason we did that is because we're building this home as an aging in place home. And what that means is we're eliminating steps, right? As you get older, you don't want to take as many steps anymore. So at the front door, we're not going to have two or three steps to go in. There's going to be one step to go right in. From the garage into the house, we're going to go right into the house. With that being said, we put a nice bead of sealant underneath to make sure that we're sealed from our bottom plate to the foundation. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with the term zone framing. Zone framing is when you change the framing in a certain section of the house. And what I mean by that is instead of using traditional studs, we use LVL studs, such as the kitchen. So the kitchen is a good zone to use LVL studs because it helps later on with cabinetry install when that wall is nice and straight. We also like to use them in the bathtubs, uh, in the showers, anywhere we're putting tile up so that the tile guys don't have to come later on and float any walls out or do any extra work. So it definitely helps in bathrooms and kitchens. This house, a little bit different. We got some extremely tall walls. Our first floor is 12 feet, our second floor is 12 feet, and some of these are two-story rooms. So to build these exterior walls with your traditional two-by material, it just won't cut it. It's very tough to get a nice straight wall, especially with these large window openings, the amount of light that we have coming through, any imperfection in that wall is gonna show. Quite frankly, at the end of the day, it made sense just to do all the walls. Okay, so most of the time when people hear LVL, they think of big beams or a few inch and three quarter beams laminated together. However, on this project, all of our LVLs are the same size as the traditional studs. So they're inch and a half by five and a half. Again, as you can see, it's two story room, big tall walls. Any light that comes through there, any imperfections in that wall would show, but we're guaranteed to have a nice straight wall. So as we wrap up our framing and dive into the next phase of construction, be sure to check back. We've got our roof going on, we'll have windows going in, we'll be starting MEPs, some exciting stuff. Be sure to check back.